Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to quickly build Python dashboards and interactive graphs that can be run in your web browser. And here you can see one example. What you can see over here is a life expectancy for different countries. And from this drop-down menu, I can select a country. For example, I can select Singapore and you can see the life expectancy. Or I can ex select some other country, for example, Uzbekistan, and we can see the life expectancy. Notice that this interactive dashboard and graph is running in my web browser and here is the address. That is, I'm running it locally. This interactive dashboard is created by using Dash. Dash is a low-code framework for rapidly building data applications in Python. It's based on Flask, Plot.ly, React, and React.js. Before I provide a detailed explanation on how to build this web application, I will first briefly summarize what's happening behind the scene. Behind the scene, we are actually reading information from a database. And this database is in the form of Pandas data frame. Here it is. It contains countries, continents, year, life expectancy, population, and GDP per capita information. This is a standard Pandas data frame, and we can access columns as well as all the rows and information. For example, let's see all the countries that are in this data set. I will simply type df.country and over here I will type unique to see all the countries. And here they are. These are almost all countries in the world. And we have information about these countries. Now if I go over here, by basically specifying a certain country, I'm reading information from my Pandas data frame. And you can generalize this example to some other applications. So, for example, to mathematics application, robotics application, or some other data science application. Okay, let's start from scratch. First of all, we will create a Python virtual environment. Then we will install Dash in that virtual environment. And finally, we will write Python code that will run our application. So let's open a command prompt, click on start and search for command prompt. And here it is. Then I will go to my C disk. Then on this C disk, create a new folder called codes. I already have the codes folder, so I will not execute this. However, you should execute this. So I will go to my codes folder. And inside of this folder, I'm going to create a folder, folder called nest dash. And then I will go to that folder. And in this folder, I will create Python virtual environment. To do that, I need to type this Python dash M. VNV is the command and the name of the virtual environment is environment one. Okay, the next step is to activate that Python virtual environment. To do that, we will execute this file called activate.bat inside of environment1 and scripts. And as the result, you will see that our virtual environment is activated. That is, you should see in parentheses environment1 over here. The next step is to install the necessary libraries and Python modules. First of all, we will need dash. To install dash, we simply need to type pip install dash. And this should install dash. Be patient over here. And at the same time, you can see that this will also install flask, plot ly, and other things. So let's be patient here, since this will take some time. Next, let's make sure that pandas is installed in our virtual environment. To do that, let's type pip install pandas. And let's make sure that numpy is also installed. 
Okay, next, let's create our first script. To do that, I will be using Visual Studio Code. To start Visual Studio Code in my virtual environment, I need to type code with a dot. And this will start Visual Studio Code. Next, let's create a new file in the Visual Studio Code. Click on File and click on New File. And I will call the file as test-1.py. And I will save it. And over here, we will write our script. To save the time and for clarity of this video tutorial, I will simply paste the script that I previously wrote. And I'm going to explain this script line by line. I will also provide a link to all the codes and commands that I'm using in this video tutorial. A link will be provided in the description below this video and in the comments section. Now, the main idea of this script is to download the database from this link, that is, it will download this comma separated value file and it will create a web app. However, before I even explain this script, it's very important to understand the downloaded data frame or the pandas database. For that purpose, I'm going to open this database from another Python editor. That is, I will open it from the spider editor. I like to use the spider editor when I have to debug some code or when I have to understand some piece of the code since I can simply select a piece of the code that I want to execute and the result in the workspace will be shown over here. If you don't have spider installed on your system, you can install it like this. First of all, you need to install Anaconda. Anaconda is a free software or a software package that contains a number of very useful Python editors, compilers, and other programs. And after you install Anaconda, you will see over here Spider. To come to this window, you need to start the Anaconda Navigator. You can simply do it by typing Anaconda Navigator over here. And after that, you can start Spider. And then you will be over here. So, what I will do over here, I will simply import pandas as pd and I will download this comma separated value file from this link. Let me enlarge this link. And here is the file. And then we will do some exploratory data analysis such that we understand our database. After we understand our database, we will go back to our Visual Studio code and we will explain this code that creates our application. So let's go back to Spider, and over here I will clear my workspace, and then I will execute this code over here, from here to here. And this is all we need to do. And you can see we have downloaded everything, and let's start exploring this data frame. First of all, let's type df, and we can see the downloaded data frame. We can see country, we can see continent, year, life expectancy, population, etc. Let's do inspection. So let's see our countries. We can do like this by typing df.country and then we can type unique to see the unique countries we have and here they are. Perfect. Now, we can also access the columns and we can see what the columns are giving us, etc. Now, what is very interesting over here is that we can filter the data. So let's learn how to filter the data since we will be using the filter data in our app. It's very important to know how to properly filter the data since with a few clicks in our web application, we will actually perform that. And when clicking, we will actually execute the piece of code that I will explain right now. Consequently, be very careful and try to understand the code. For example, when we click on the country, we should get all the data for that specific country. However, our data frame contains, you can see over here, this column that contains several rows for a particular country. So let's extract the rows for a some country, for example, for the United States. So how to do that? Well, we can define data frame 2 
as data frame and over here we can do this data frame dot country and make sure that you don't misspell the column name is equal to United States so what will happen behind the scene we're going to filter the data and we will only extract United States so let's do that and let's see df2 now and here it is now everything is cleaned and we have our United States perfect now in this video tutorial we will plot the life expectancy at a certain point we will have to access the life expectancy we can actually do it like this we can simply here specify life expectancy that is this column and here it is and here's our life expectancy you can also access the column like this you can simply type life expectancy here and another column that we will have to extract is years so here it is we can extract that column like this and over here we just need to specify the year and that's it here it is. Perfect. We can continue now. Let's now go back to our Python code implementing our application. First of all, we need to import several classes, modules, and functions. From dash, we import dash. From dash, we need to import HTML. From dash, we need to import DCC. Then we need to import callback. Then we need to import output and input. And notice over here that from plot ly express we are importing actually plot ly express as px and we are importing pandas i will explain all these functions as well as modules later on okay so over here we are downloading our comma separated value file and we are reading it as a panda or pandas data frame and over here we call a dash constructor to create our app then we specify the layout. What you can see over here is the HTML, and we, here is our HTML. This is actually a module that enables us to write an HTML code, and behind the scenes, this line over here will be transferred into the HTML code, and the code will be automatically written. So what do we do over here? HTML, we specify header, one that is the size of the header and you can also see another thing over here if you keep the cursor for long enough you can see other options that you have here you can specify children uh, keys access key class name etc for people who are experts in html they will completely understand now over here we specify the title life expectancy or the children title we specify the style of the text we align the text to be centered now over here from you can see DCC we actually use drop-down and what is our drop-down so what the drop-down will do we will create a drop-down menu in the top corner of our app as you can see at the beginning of our tutorial and when we click on that drop-down menu we will call df.country unique. That is, we will refer to our data frame, then we will retrieve the column corresponding to country, and we will plot or put or fill in that drop down menu with the names of the countries. And as you can see over here, I did it at the beginning of this tutorial. Let me show you back, go back, go back. Here it is. So this array, or better to say, a list of strings will be taken and the drop-down menu will be filled such that we can select a specific country. Over here, I specify the default, default country, that is United States. Based on our selection, we will read a certain countries from our data frame. And the ID should be drop-down selection. Then we call DCC graph to specify the graph content. Then we need to specify the callback function. And here's our callback.
callback function. The callback function will be called once we press the selection from the drop-down menu. The output will be graph content, as you can see over here, and the figure will be created. And the input is actually our drop-down selection, and it's being selected based on the value. This is very important. And keep this keyword to be value. Otherwise, this code will not work. Now, here is a function that will be called by the callback function, that is after we press the drop-down, and this function will be used to update the graph. We will pass the value. So what is the value? Well, the value is our selected country from the list of the countries specified over here. And now we perform filtering, the same filtering that I explained here. We simply say, okay, we want to filter our database based on the selected country. And that's precisely what's happening over here. And next, what do we do? We return a graph object or a reference to the graph object where this DFF is the filtered pandas data frame. And we specify over here, what do we want to plot? On the x-axis, we want to plot the year. That is, we want to plot this column over here. And on the y-axis, we want to plot another, another column of our filter data frame. That is, we want to plot life expectancy. That is this thing over here. So there is no mystery. This is very simple. And at the end, we have this if name is equal to main. We simply execute our app in the debug mode. And that's it. Simple as that. Okay, so let's run this code. There are several approaches for running this code. The safest approach is to first select the Python interpreter and to make sure that we are using the Python interpreter inside of our virtual environment. To do that, press and hold Control Shift P again to repeat. Control Shift P and this drop down menu will be displayed. Then search for Python select interpreter and here it is and make sure that you're selecting python from our virtual environment and click here and then over here simply run the code and let's analyze what will happen okay this thing will be printed dash is running on this address serving flask app test dash one debug mode on so what's happening now the app is running. However, where is our app? Well, to show the app, we need to copy this address, then to go to our web browser, and then in this web browser, we need to go to this address. And voila, here is our app. Simple as that. And let's test it. You can, for example, select some other country, such as Thailand, and you can see over here life expectancy, how it increases. Basically, life expectancy of people increased since 1950s, since medicines became available, and children were not dying in early age. And you can see this trend for most countries. Unfortunately, there are some countries where life expectancy is still relatively low. Okay, and now you can, for example, see what's happening. You can see server available, zero errors, callbacks, etc. A nice thing here is that you can actually zoom in, zoom out. These are completely interactive, interactive tables. And over here, you can see what you can do. If you now move, you can see life expectancy for a certain years, etc. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. And see you in the next video tutorial.